is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i'm wolf pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2024 chevrolet corvette courtesy of apple chevrolet in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because i've only reviewed the c8 corvette once and i feel like this car is worthy of me reviewing it at least a couple dozen more times and there actually are some new colors for the 2024 model year we have one of them today so i'll be going over that a little bit later in the video there's some new wheel designs and plenty of other changes as well so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering fuel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a couple different configurations for the 2024 chevrolet corvette first one being the one lt starting at sixty nine thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars two lt for seventy seven thousand ninety five dollars and the three lt starting at eighty one thousand seven hundred and forty five dollars that was all pricing for the coupe if you wanted to add the convertible variant simply add forty nine hundred dollars to any of those prices which is a lot less expensive than it used to be i think it used to be like adding sixty five hundred or somewhere in that ballpark but anyways regardless of trim level or configuration that you go with the power plant is going to be the same powering the beast is a 6.2 liter direct injected v8 putting out 490 horsepower at around 6400 rpm 465 pound feet of torque coming in at 5100 rpm and that power by the way is bumped up five horsepower and five pound feet of torque if you were to go with the z51 package or the performance exhaust either or but power set to the rear wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out those paddle shifters here in a little bit zero to 60 time coming in at approximately three seconds flat or 2.8 seconds for the z51 top speed 184 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 16 in the city 24 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel but said so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our c8 corvette i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's essentially a circular dial located just to the right of those shift buttons there those drive modes will include tour weather sport track my mode and there is a z mode actually on the steering wheel itself as well ultimately adjusting things like the shift points and throttle response the steering sensitivity suspension settings and actually the braking response as well so quite a bit of adjustments with all of those drive modes as expected in a car like the c8 so anyways now have we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straight away let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here quick 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 <laughs> they're lightning quick probably the quickest paddle shifters i've ever experienced they're they're right up there with porsche they're right up there with mercedes amg they are insanely quick reacting paddle shifters that was uh that was pretty darn good so it doesn't get any better than these paddle shifters but now i've got that out of the way let's go ahead and find one more straight away let's have the fun part now let's Let's put the acceleration here to the test. I'm actually gonna try to time it. There is a performance timer up on the gauges here. I'll go over that a little bit later in the video, but that essentially is gonna clock your zero to 60 time and a bunch of other stuff too. But let's go ahead and give that a shot and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Chevrolet Corvette here up to speed. All right, in three, two, one, go. Oh, we're sliding. Okay, so we were sliding there at the beginning. Um, it's a little bit colder of a day out today. Zero to 60 came in at 4.9 just because I couldn't get any traction whatsoever, but still 4.9 seconds, that's enough to put a smile on your face. That was insane. And uh, I can only imagine if it was a nice summer or spring day with the temperatures being a little bit warmer than whatever it is today. I think it's like 40 degrees or something. So it's not too crazy, but still not enough to get any decent traction here on the street. So again, drag strip, easily zero to 60 in three seconds, or even on a warmer day, I can see that as well. But colder climates, <laughs> it's not gonna work out too well. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back. They're actually bigger, which you hardly ever see. 13.8 inch ventilated rear discs and Brembo brakes do come standard, by the way. So gotta love that configuration. You're gonna get larger brakes for the Z51 package, of course. 60 zero stopping distance comes in at 97 feet. And that is probably the quickest number I've ever seen. I remember my uh, Mustang GT came in at 99 feet, but 97, that's insane. So as far as braking power goes, it instantly 
brings you to a stop. It is absolutely insane. The brakes bite so hard. So it's definitely got a race car setup when it comes to braking. So absolutely no issues with that. Then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a short and long arm double wishbone type suspension. In the back, direct acting stabilizer bar. You're gonna get an adjustable suspension with the Z51. And there is also magnetic ride control that goes for $1,895. Essentially what that does is it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the root imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up that suspension during heavy cornering, really giving you better handling, giving you the best of both worlds. So that's always something I like to recommend because you really can tell the difference. At least I can tell the difference whenever I drive the same car, one with and one without it. So it is a noticeable difference there. But as far as ride quality goes, you do tend to feel a little bit more of the road. But having said that, when it comes to the Corvette, it's probably one of the smoothest riding sports cars that you can experience. So I'm comparing it in my mind to my old Ford Mustang GT or a Chevy Camaro or something like that. This thing's actually not that bad when it comes to ride quality in a sports car at least. So I'll put it that way. As far as steering feel goes, it does adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. If you put it in that sport driving mode, it's a much heavier weight to it. But even in our tour driving mode, it still instantly points you in the direction that you wanna go. So it's a great steering feel. I love the hexagonal shape too. And again, we'll get more into the steering wheel later in the video, but it definitely gives the driver a better feeling of being in control. And it does feel like you're in a race car with this hexagonal steering wheel. So absolutely no issues there. As far as cabin noise goes, you get a little bit of the engine noise when you really get on it because the engine is literally right behind us here you gotta love a mid-engine setup and quite honestly if you're buying a car like the c8 corvette you're gonna love it as well then touching on rear visibility it is obviously not the best you don't have a ton of visibility back there but it is to be expected in a car like this so it's something you definitely get used to whenever i review the uh, camaro or 370z uh it's the same deal but yet everyone in the comments who owns one of these cars they always say it's something that you get used to it's not that bad guys don't worry about it i'm gonna go ahead to take the word of the people in the comments section and say that you will get used to it and also i am looking at a head-up display that comes on the 2lt and 3lt trim levels projecting your speed speed limit and safety features up onto your windshield so you gotta love that as well and there is actually an electronic rear view mirror which is newly standard for the 2024 model year i just turned it on that is pretty darn cool so i don't know so if you wanted even better visibility screw what i said about the rear visibility if you don't like it turn on the rear camera mirror because that is perfect so anyways that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's not go find a cool spot and let's check out the exterior of our brand new 2024 chevrolet corvette all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 chevrolet corvette finished in cacti green in case you were curious yes that is one of the new colors for 2024 the other two new colors are going to be riptide blue and sea wolf gray personally i think this is the new best color for the 2024 corvette i love this cacti green personally i would probably throw the yellow rotors on there as well as some yellow seat belts and call it a day because this thing is dang good looking but anyways that's my spec let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the vin first character is the number one indicating that the new 2024 c8 corvette is built and assembled here in the u.s as it should be but do want to go over some convertible specs real quick for anybody who is interested in that adds 77 pounds for the convertible uh, the top retracts in only 17 seconds it can operate at up to speeds of 30 miles per hour as well and essentially it uses six electric motors to open and close the top in case you were curious about that but let's go ahead and start up front so let me start with these massive air curtains down here to the sides i think that is the first thing i always noticed on the c8 corvette but gloss black accents surrounding that you got a matte black front lip then to the sides led headlights with led daytime running lights you do get the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark in night headlights will turn on automatically for you there you also do get automatic high beams though so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so gotta love that and one of the other cool things about the front here i'll throw in some b-roll real quick but you have a frunk since it's a mid-engine car, you probably were wondering, if you're not familiar with the CA Corvette at least, is what's up front? There's obviously a hood there. You have a frunk, kind of like a Tesla. So that's pretty cool. You got some added storage there. And then if you're wondering, yes, there is a trunk in the back actually as well. We'll get more into that later. But anyways, I love seeing the frunk. But anyways, that is the front end. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so I'm just noticing now this car kind of blends in with our background here. But anyways, let's go ahead and make our way to the side. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals. They are power folding. And the driver's side side mirror is actually an auto dimming side mirror as well. So if somebody has their high beams on behind you at night, 
Uh, you do have the auto dimming rear view mirror, but you also have the auto dimming side mirror as well. So that is pretty darn cool. And again, massive air vents towards the back. Let me actually get up a little bit closer. I can give you guys a little bit of an up close and personal here with these air vents. And yes, of course they are functional with it being a uh, mid engine car that allows cooling to the rear engine there. So that is definitely pretty cool. You see what I did there? Cooling engine. Cool. Yeah. Anyways, taking a look at the wheel setup. Of course, it is a staggered fitment. You actually get 19 inches up front and 20 inches in the back. And again, there are plenty of new wheel designs for 2024. What we have, I don't believe is one of them. I feel like I've seen this one before, but that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, something else since we are around to the back of this one, this is one of my favorite looks, if not my favorite look on the Corvette here, because of course you have a kind of a body color shark fin antenna and that's where that rear camera mirror camera is going to be located so guys could see that up there but one of the interesting things between the coupe and the convertible is with the convertible you actually do not have access to see the rear engine whereas with the coupe you do have some nice access to see what is back there so i do want to mention that definitely one of the big differences between the coupe and convertible but anyways you do have the corvette lettering spelled out horizontally found in the rear trunk there of course plenty of rear spoilers available the z51 is going to give you the highest rear spoiler we do have kind of a gloss black mild rear spoiler which i think looks good back there because there are plenty of gloss black accents on this thing i do like the led taillights i think they look good but just below those led taillights you got Got more ventilation right there so that is functional yet again you can see through it hopefully the camera is showing that you can see through it but anyways you do have a little bit of a rear diffuser down below there and to the sides dual exhaust outlets with quad stainless steel tips or black tips the black tips are optional but i love that look but anyways having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here as always here is that exhaust clip So now since you are around to the back of this one when it comes to opening that rear trunk there is a button on the key fob to go ahead and open it but the coolest part about that rear trunk is the fact that it is a soft closed trunk kind of like mercedes-benz and bmw does with their doors when you don't close the trunk all the way it's going to kind of suction it back in so that is a pretty cool little feature i never saw it on a trunk before the c8 corvette came out i always saw it on doors so i don't know i love it but Anyways, once opened up, cargo capacity back there comes in at 12.6 cubic feet. So not a ton, but then again, that is what the frunk is for, of course. There are no back seats, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that. But then make our way up to the front seats. Eight-way power adjustable front seats do come standard. The GT2 bucket seats are going to come in the 3LT, which, by the way, is the trim level that we have today. And I love these seats because I love the carbon fiber accents on them. They're all a one-piece seat as well. You got the Corvette logo at the headrest, and they are 100% bucket seats they definitely hold you in place incredibly well they are heated and ventilated front seats by the way for the two and three lt trim levels overall insanely comfortable and again hold you in place so freakishly well around the turn so big fan of that but now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel because i'm a big fan of this as well it is tilt and telescoping it is power adjustable it is leather wrapped however you can get a suede finish to it we do have that option which is pretty darn cool as well so that's what i'm looking at it is a hexagonal steering wheel also a big fan of that and it is actually heated for the two and three lt trim levels but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup and let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your corvette logo on the one side when you flip it over, lock, unlock that uh, remote start button. That's going to be the middle circular button there. And then, of course, you have buttons to pop the frunk and the trunk. So that is a pretty cool key setup, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot in the brake and press that silver engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so once started up, 12-inch digital gauge cluster does come standard. And, of course, it can be completely adjusted using the steering wheel mounting controls found on the right side of the steering wheel. And, of course, when you change the drive mode, it is going to adjust the look of those gauges as well. For example, when I just put it in that sport driving mode, it gave a bunch of red hues, and I don't 
think I mentioned it earlier, it is gonna open up the exhaust valves, um, creating a much more rumbly noise as well, which is pretty darn cool. Let me put it in track mode. It kind of looks like a, a Honda S2K gauges with just the RPMs at the very top. That's pretty cool as well. I love this, very customizable. That's one of the beauties of digital gauges is that you can really, uh, it's just a software update to completely change the look of your gauges. So I don't know, I think that's pretty amazing. But of course it has things like outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Trip A, trip B, there's the time of the day and uh, pretty much everything you could possibly want on the gauges up there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality because again, Chevy killed it here with the Corvette. Six different seatbelt colors. Let me start by mentioning that. I personally, I tried to configure this one before I went out on this drive. I love the yellow seat belts. I think they look pretty darn cool. But again, there's six different colors you have to choose from. Carbon fiber trim is available. We have that. We have it just around the um, uh, the gauge cluster here. We have it surrounding the uh, window buttons. It's definitely everywhere, so I'm a big fan of that. Universal home remote for the 2LT and 3LT trim levels for up to three different garage doors. Wireless phone charger for the 2LT and 3LT trim levels as well. That's kind of located just in the middle of the driver and passenger seats kind of behind them. Uh, there's that row of buttons that the C8 Corvette is known for, giving you everything like your climate information, heated and ventilated seat buttons as well. You do have a couple cup holders just to the left of that. Let's take a look Look inside the center armrest here there is almost no center armrest there is a not a whole lot of space whatsoever in that but one of the coolest things um touching on the glove box here you might be feeling around the glove box and be wondering where is the button to actually open this thing it's actually uh kind of a 007 hidden button just in between those air vents there for the passenger there so you just press that and it's going to open up for you and there's even more space in there for you if you needed it so that is pretty cool also love the aluminum speaker covers we have a suede headliner as well well with contrast stitching on the roof. So Chevy did an absolutely wonderful job. This is a luxury car on the inside and a race car at the same time. So there's just nothing wrong with the interior quality in this thing at all. But anyways, let's now go ahead and touch on the infotainment screen. Eight inch color touchscreen display comes standard, Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You're gonna find a factory navigation system for the 2LT and 3LT trim levels. You can check out your climate control settings up there. There is a lap timer as well. That's pretty insane. Also, of course, your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there's a couple of them. You're gonna find a Bose 10 speaker sound system for the 1LT and then a Bose 14 speaker sound system for the two and three LT trim levels. So obviously with us having the three LT, we got the 14 speaker sound system with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Yeah, that was plenty fun. Absolutely no issues there. Plenty of clarity. Clarity was amazing. Imagine 14 speakers in the cabin the size of the Corvette. It's overkill. A uh, ton of bass as well. So really, this sound system for what the Corvette is, it's absolutely brilliant. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Corvette in reverse, you will find a very, very high definition rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so front side side curtain airbags do come standard, tire pressure monitoring system, rear parking sensors actually come standard as well. You gotta love that. Side blind zone alert then coming with the two LT and the three LT trim levels. That's gonna be those little car icons in your side mirrors. So you know who is in your blind spot. You gotta love that then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here, extremely quick absolutely insane acceleration in this thing. I wish it was a little bit warmer, so I really could have put that zero to 60 to the test, but insanely quick paddle shifters. I will say that a lot of times paddle shifters are just kind of like a gimmick feature that most cars put on them and they're not that quick and they're, nobody ever uses them because they're not that quick. But with the Corvette, they are the quickest. They are insanely quick. And I love them. I love that the Corvette has them here, but also insane braking. You can't beat a 60 zero in only 97 feet. That's definitely race car good right there. Insane handling as well. Great interior quality, great customization as well. I'm not just talking about the different gauge customization. I mean, when you actually configure the Corvette, you have so many different customization options, which can really bring the price up. By the way, our car tops out at nearly $100,000 that we are in today because of all the customization that you can do to this thing. So I like it for that reason as well. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see different spy shots of these cars like this one before they actually get to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're new, new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. I do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you guys all 
in the next video. Stay gold.